Hello everybody. Uh, in this tutorial I'm planning to show you how you can create something similar to this button. So as you can see you pretty much hover on this button and there's this nice transition that the text goes up and an icon comes down and you can pretty much uh, like whatever <laughs> it is in, in your page or whatever this button refers to. All right, so let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div for my button. We'll give it a class btn. And on the CSS side of things, I will give my body a background of uh, maybe EEE. -E -E, and then on my btn class, I will give it maybe a width of 160 pixel and height of maybe 50 pixel maybe a background of tomato color so you can see it and then I would like to center it in my page so what I do is I will make the position absolute and then top 50% of its container which is body at the moment and then left is 50% and then I do transform translate minus 50% and minus 50%, right? It's pretty much gets centered in my page. Now, what I would like to do, instead of, you know, writing here, like, I don't know, like, for example, hover me as a text, what I would like to do is to use pseudo elements, actually. So, I will do, in order to write pseudo elements, for, for those of you who doesn't know how to do it, use colon and then before uh, uh, what would you do is put a content and then in the content which represents the content here is hover me and then again I will use the same technique here to center it in my page so pretty much copying and pasting this uh, you can see that it gets centered in order to give it like a button Feel, I will do a cursor on my bot btn class to pointer so you can see that it kind of gets pointed. Now what I want to do is when I hover on my button I want the hover to go up right so what I would do is btn on hover and then the before which represents the hover me here I would like it to basically go maybe top minus or zero let's let's put zero and see what happens so it comes up here maybe a little bit more maybe minus 10 pixel you see it goes up there just to make it a little bit more of a distance let's put it like here right so this is what I would have and then now to add an icon over here I will use the BTN after pseudo element right so BTN after I would put uh, well let's find some sort of an icon the way I do it usually there is this very nice uh, web icon library called Ionicons right I'll search Ionicons and then I go to their website and then I choose scroll down all the way and there's this CDN that I will copy uh, and for those of you who doesn't know what CDN stands for it's content delivery network so instead of you know downloading the library and putting it in your you know file structure, you can always use remotely uh, this this URL and then use use whatever you can use within that, right? So going back to here, I'm gonna go to my uh, CSS settings. I will add external CSS, which is this. Then I save it and close it. Now I have it within uh, here. And now, in order to add maybe one of the icons over here, let's choose let's choose a gear icon, for example. Uh, let's choose this one, for example. It's ion. This is this is the identifier that you, you should use. But then, this is not something you can use. So, what in order to use this, you can always this is the class to be used. So, if I add like an let's say I here. I and then give it that class you can see that you get the gear icon right over here 
but this is not what I want. I want to add that in my content section, in my after. So that is not the same as adding the class here, because if you add the class, it just adds that as a text, right? So there is this very nice cheat sheet over here uh, that I go in, and then I will search for that gear. And this is the CSS content that you have to use when you're using this, when you want to represent this in your pseudo elements. So going back, I will, instead of this, I will choose this, right? And in order to have the fill and look, you have to add the font family, Ionicons, Ionicons, right? So as you can see, now you have the gear icon in your pseudo elements for the BTN. Right? And then definitely you can use the same technique to kind of center it. And just copy and paste it. Now it's centered, maybe making it a little bit bigger, font size maybe 30 pixel. So it looks like this. But now the difference is that I don't want the top to be 50%. So as you remember, when you hover on this, it goes up. I put the top to minus 30 pixels. So now, instead of putting it to top 50%, I will put 100%, which goes down. So if this is the container of my pseudo element, 100% will put it over here. But I also want to add plus 30 pixels, right? Plus 30 pixels. But in order to have it in CSS, you have to use calc function. So if I use calc function, you can see that this icon will go down here. And then on my hover, on my BTN, so if I do BTN, hover, and then after here, half after pseudo element, I want the top to become 50%. <coughs> so as you can see, when it goes up, when the before class goes up on hover, the after class comes on top 50% from 100% plus 30 pixel, right? <coughs> Now, in order to give it a transition, you know, because this is jumping, I want this to be an animation. What I would do is that on my BTM class, I will add transition, maybe all, and then 0 0.5 seconds, right? So, as you can see, it doesn't work because, it, because on the hover element, the, the elements that change is before and after. So, I will move it out. I will move it to my before element and I will move it to my after element, right? So you can see that you get this very nice kind of animation when you hover on your icon, right? You can make them even less to have a kind of a nicer, smoother animation. So you can see that this happens. But now, as you can see, we want to hide the rest or the space or the area around the bottom. Basically, we want this bottom to act as a mask for the before and after. And in order to achieve that, what you need to do is on, on your BTN class, you do overflow, overflow, hidden. Right? Now, you can see that you have this very nice animation. I would, I would like to change the color to white as well, which looks much nicer. You can see that this is pretty much the effect that you get and you got it over here as well. So I have developed a bunch of other kind of uh, transitions on the animations. You go to kotos.com and then uh, if you scroll down on the second page you pretty much see this uh, CSS only button hover inspirations with the code. So if you go here you can see that there are some specific ones let let let's let let's uh, give give the page a little bit of a time to, to load this stuff uh, so I have created some more uh, sort of animations here for example material outward comes and goes or you know share this animation or top sliding button so if we give it a little bit of a time to load so, for example, on this one, you see, you see what happens. So, if you hover on this element, 
you see this kind of animation. So you can see it goes outwards. And this one, you know, this comes in, and if you hover out, it goes up. And then share this button, you have this kind of nice animation. And then maybe toggle this. This is the one we created right now. This one is a little bit nicer, so you see this queue that comes and goes. And also another one, which has this very nice arrow as well. And then you can go ahead and see the CSS code, see the HTML code for each and every of them. Or you can pretty much click on this uh, link and go to the actual uh, prototype. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please go ahead and like and obviously share this tutorial if you liked it. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Have a great day and night. Goodbye.